the first thing we have to do is we have to care about it. We gotta, I mean, here in America, it's the only place in the world where the term college graduate is used as a slur in our halls of Congress. We've got to get past that point. We used to be there. In the holidays, we could do anything. We saw something like this and we said, oh, that's amazing, let's cherish it. Now we try to cut it out of the cliff face. And that's got to stop. Somehow, in the 12,000 year history of the petroglyphs in the volcanic tablelands, it wasn't until Western civilization discovered them before we started destroying them. Right here, as you can see, is one of the many examples of vandalism here at the Chalfant site in the volcanic tablelands. There's absolutely no excuse for it. I've complained in other videos how especially one girl named Heather and her stupid boyfriend chiseled their names across an 8,000 year old petroglyph. Heather, no one really cares who you're dating. Heather, you scratched your, in, your name along with your boyfriend on a rock over 8,000 year old petroglyphs. Do we really know, need to know who Heather is or her stupid boyfriend 12,000 years from now? Probably not. But through my uh, trips throughout the volcanic tablelands, thankfully the ones that are off the beaten path, specifically the Crown Jewels, 13 Moons, Skyrock, and Rosetta, are very difficult to find, are not on a map. I mean, this place is on Google Maps. Nothing you can do about it. I mean, there's a road right to the Chalfant petroglyph site. And there's a road right through the petroglyph field on Fishlaw Road, north of Bishop. Those sites have all had horrible examples and instances of vandalism. But the, when you get off the beaten path, oh, oh, Jesus, God, those sites are well protected. And it's not like there's a security force out there or anything. It's that the individuals that have taken the time and the respect to find out where they are, we don't divulge a location just for crap like this. They took a stone saw and cut this out. And there's other examples here in the volcanic tablelands, real near the road, publicly known, where you, people use stone saws to cut into the rock and steal petroglyphs. There's a, there's somewhat of controversy on should I even be making petroglyph uh, videos about specifically uh, Skyrock, 13 Moons, and Rosetta because I'm publicizing them. There's an upside and a downside. I never tell the location. They are not near a road of any shape or form. I mean, one, it was a two hour trek across the desert to get to it. And after your two hour hike, you're probably not going to be in any shape to throw a thousand pound uh, rock on your back and hoof it across the desert. Don't think it's going to happen. Here's the upside. This kid, 17 year old from Wisconsin, I think, saw one of my petroglyph videos. I think it was Rosetta. Until he saw that video, by chance, on YouTube, he never knew that petroglyphs existed. He had no idea. He saw it and he was mesmerized. And he emailed me and he told me that he spent the next three days staying up all night just soaking up every single thing he could find on YouTube, on the web, written papers on petroglyphs. He picked a bunch of books off of Amazon to read about petroglyphs. And he told me he was a high school kid and he had no plan. He just hated high school, man. He saw no point to it. He was just going to, you know, go work someplace, make some money, and that was it. That was going to be his life. Until he saw a video about a petroglyph and it lit his head on fire. His enthusiasm changed from, I'm gonna be a Walmart greeter for the rest of my life, to he's going to go to school. And he told me his next chance he got when he's gonna to talk to his high school counselor, find a program that may let him in with his crappy grades because he didn't care about school. 
and he wants to be an archaeologist because of one video about something he never knew existed on planet Earth. And I think that's worth it because those kinds of people, they will come out here. They will take photos, they'll make videos, they'll sketch, but they won't do this crap to the artwork, this ancient, ancient artwork. And I think that's the difference. And I think the way out of this whole quagmire is a prosecution for people to doing this stuff, restoration of corrupted sites, but also education. I think education is an important tool to help with this. I think advocacy is a good tool to, to uh, combat petroglyph vandalism. And there's a lot of other things we could be doing. We've got to stop using the term college graduate as a slur. We've got to respect the work and the time and the tenacity and the money to get through college to do something purposeful, not just with just your life, but for our country and for the world and humanity in greater terms. Let me just show you some of the other examples. This one, riddled with bullet holes. And of course you can see the vandals left their, what I'm presuming is their graduating year. 1984, it looks like. Either that or is their birth year. Either that or is the year that they uh, shot the rock. Here's one from the uh, Bishop Petroglyphs where somebody's quite proud of their manhood. Here's a photo of somebody who's kind of proud of their initials. Here's Ali and his best friend. Here's somebody that scratched their name. On an 8,000 year old petroglyph. I think the problem is, with, especially with the vandalism at petroglyph uh, sites, is that easy access and public access, like when they put the road right to the petroglyph, it's going to get defaced. If it's uh, out in the wilderness, it's not. Somebody that was very critical of me putting uh, uh, videos up with no location, they were very fearful that somebody was going to find them out. Hey, you pointed right to it. I said, no, it was in the volcanic table land. You know, he said, yeah, but you just walk through and you can find it. I told him, you know, think of how hard it is to wander the streets of Paris to find the latest Banksy. Paris is only 40 square miles. The volcanic tablelands are almost 600 square miles. And there is boulder after boulder after boulder, just like this, scattered everywhere. You're not going to find it by chance. And these things are so difficult to, to get to, so difficult to find that I think the people that would take the time in the strenuous hikes to get there would respect the site once they got there. Not all the time, they're definitely, but there's gonna be always that person. But in terms of education, like the kid from Wisconsin lighting his head on fire, that is our best way. Those are our best tools to fight vandalism of ancient sites like this here in American Southwest or anywhere in the world. And I think that's the best way to respect these sacred sites, to keep them around as long as we can. Now, I've discussed previously the uh, process of desert varnishing will erase these sites in another 12,000 years. They'll still be chiseled into the rock rather deeply, but the oxidation process of the rock in the air and everything else will soon erase them from our visible sight. And once that happens, then they will really be protected. But again, I think education, advocacy, and getting back to where we respect education is the key to success to protect these sensitive sites 
and not have this nonsense continue. And that's it here from the undisclosed vandalism site from some chucklehead that just had to go and ruin something. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like what I'm trying to do on the channel, please subscribe. And if you've got some hateful sputum, you've just got to get off your chest because some jerkwad did this. Drop those in the comments below. I'll love every one of them. So until next time, I'll be your lap partner. Take care. Bye-bye. There's a salamander and I think it's trying to crawl up my leg. I really don't want to have a freak out with the salamander <laughs> darting up my shorts. <laughs> God, it's not the point of this video. Good? It's good. It's a wrap. Damn right it's a wrap.